This is a test tube. That test tube became 96 test tubes. This is what you did the human genome on. So these are all little robots, and you have 96 test tubes instead of one. These are 3,072 test tubes. So this is a lab about half the size of a room, and you can do all of your genomes. Oh, for about a thousand bucks using machines that look like this, plus a series of robots, hearts. So you can now build machines that keep hearts alive outside the body. And we're working on lungs. We're working on pancreas. People are out of the hospital in half the time, half the cost, because instead of putting the hearts on ice, you keep them alive. And one of the things that eventually we're going to start doing is thinking about treating organs outside the body. So the first application of this is you keep the heart alive and transplant it, but maybe the second application is you take the liver out and do the chemo and radiation in the liver outside of the body instead of poisoning your whole body. What you're looking at is very quick DNA detection. So you're looking at the equivalent of doing human genomes in minutes but you're not doing it in detail. What you're doing is you're looking for the signature of the DNA going through this. Why is this interesting? Because what you do is you put this inside a ventilator and it's sniffing the air. So it's sniffing the air for the particular signature of a series of pathogens. This is DARPA work. And what that does, or what it means, is the first stage of this, you look for stuff that is harming people. But the second stage of this is you're taking this DNA that's running through a machine, and it's sniffing the air in a doctor's office. So when you walk into a doctor's office, by the act of breathing, what you're doing is it's reading every disease that you have as you're sitting in the doctor's office. And it will tell you, you have influenza, you have malaria, you have TB. Whatever you're breathing out into the air, you'll be able to tell. Last thing I'm going to talk about. This is the world's first synthetic programmed cell. So this is work by Craig Venter and Ham Smith and John Glass. And what they did is they took naked DNA from one cell, put it into a different cell, and had that cell boot up as a different species. This was published in Science about a month ago. And what you're looking at is the equivalent of the first transistor. And what this thing will do, we hope, is begin to change the world's energy markets. Because among other things, we will be able to program cells for specific purposes. Some of these cells will generate more gas out of coal, if you generate more gas out of coal, you don't have to take off mountaintops, and you don't have to send miners down into mines that explode. So you alter the cell, and if you think of coal, coal is a whole bunch of plants that have rotted under pressure and burned for millions of years. And if you feed bacteria coal, they do the same thing as happens with children when you feed them beans. They generate a lot of gas. And if you do generate a lot of gas, then you can probably take the gas instead of the coal out of those mines. That is application one. Application two, you can also think about taking sulfur out of oil. If you do that, that is $14 a barrel. This is a company called Synthetic Genomics. We have grown very quickly, in about a year and a half. There will be some stuff in the next month or two that will be important that will complement the first cell transplant, because not only do you have to insert the gene code from one cell into another, but you have to be able to program that cell. If you do that, then you will change the rules of the energy markets. And that is what we are trying to do at Synthetic Genomics. Thank you.